So we're looking at an 82 Jeep Cherokee that I recently acquired. Um, I was having some struggles because my battery would be drained after just a short amount of time. Um, I had let it sit for three days and the battery would be dead. And so I bought a new battery, first of all, because to me that was, that, that was the logical step. However, that battery was drained too. And so what I started doing is I started testing load. How you do that is if you pull that positive battery terminal off and you hook up your voltmeter. Um, here, just a second, and I'll see if I have that laying in here. So here's my, here's my voltmeter. My voltmeter, in order to check the milliamps is what you're looking for, is you put it on that setting right there on DC milliamps, and you have to have the terminals plugged in like that. Um, when I first checked it, it seemed like the, the, the milliamps were within the range of what they could be. And so that perplexed me a little bit, so I thought something must have a have a intermittent draw if you will um but it didn't seem to be the case it, it seemed to be consistent every single day that that battery was drawing down so then what i did is i pulled off the the i did the same thing i checked the milliamps on that white chevy pickup over there and it was drawing significantly less than this jeep and this jeep should draw should draw less than that because it's older and there shouldn't be as much stuff running. So what I did is I started contemplating things a little bit. I started reading up. Now, if you notice here, this is not an AMC motor. This is a 350 Chevrolet. And somebody took some, some time to, uh, to make everything work like it was supposed to. And it does. It runs like a top. Um, and the, 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 it doesn't overheat and everything works like it should. And when it's running, the charging system seemed to work great. But what had happened here, and actually when I, when I first went to look at this vehicle, one thing that I noticed was that, was that this alternator wire here was tied directly to the, the, the positive terminal. Now this terminal here, this wire goes directly to the battery. And so I asked about that, and I, I've never, honestly, I've never played very much with the Chevy engine before, so I didn't really know. And he said, well, sure, that's how you convert, convert a General Motors three-wire alternator to a one-wire. I said, oh, okay. I, I didn't know anything about that. But I Googled it when I started having issues, and it seemed, yeah, he was right. With a GM three-wire alternator, if you take this, this, this cable and you tie it to the to the positive terminal it should work and so you see this is the third wire on the alternator it's still not connected to anything and when i was googling it, it was like yeah okay so what happens with with a three wire alternator is the one wire the one that doesn't go anywhere goes to an indicator light i've got a voltmeter in the cab anyway i don't need an indicator light um then this this wire is a it's, it's an exciter wire. It tells the alternator how much voltage is in that battery. And, um, and then it charges accordingly. So this just needs power from the battery. But what the gentleman failed to understand that I got this from is that this is, this is a, a, about a 95 Chevy small block. And the, the logic he used for an older General Motors three-wire alternator is perfect. But what I noticed when I disconnected this wire from the positive terminal is my draw dropped significantly. And so what that tells me, and if you look at any of the diagrams for the newer ones, it says that this wire ought to be switched. So what did I do? I put it on a switch. I actually, I actually connected this wire directly to the to the one terminal of the voltmeter. That way, I know that the that the volts that the alternator sees is the same thing that I see. And um, and ever since I did that, it works great. There's no draw on the battery, and life is good. So, to refresh a little bit, GM newer style alternator. This terminal 
This one here does need to go to the battery. This one should be switched. This should only be on when the engine is running. And then this one does go to indicator light, which isn't necessarily, which doesn't really matter. Um, so I, I'm, I'm welcome to hear if somebody has any other kind of, uh, any other kind of advice or any other insight, I'll take it because frankly, I'm a little bit new to these engines, but now it does seem like things are working exactly like they should. So thank you.